to outline this frame of reference, to place the New Testament on the grid of history, the life of Jesus from 4 BC to 30 AD, the silent period from 30 to 51, the writings of Paul from 51 to 64, but telling us almost nothing, the introduction of the Gospels, where you learn about things that we've never heard of before, like Judas Iscariot, like miracles. And the virgin birth story comes in the ninth decade, and the ascension comes in the tenth decade. It's an ongoing story, an ever-growing story. And what are we going to do with this data? Well, I hope you'll just file it. I hope you'll file it and use it as the background against which everything that I will try to say this week will be developed. What I will do tomorrow, if you come back, and I'll do it whether you come back or not, because at least my family will come back. What I'll do tomorrow is to take the first story of the crucifixion that we have in the Bible. It's in Mark. It's chapter 14, verses 17 through the end of 14 and all of chapter 15. It's a rather long segment. That's the first time that anybody has narrated the story of the crucifixion. Before that, all we had was Paul saying he died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. Nothing more. So we have to ask the question. If the story of the crucifixion is not written until 42 years after the crucifixion itself, how accurate is it? How many of the symbols are real? Oh, I don't mean to suggest that there's no reality to the fact that Jesus was crucified, and by the Romans, I might add, not by the Jews, by the Romans. He wasn't just under Pontius Pilate, as our creed say, it was at the hand of Pontius Pilate. We tend to exonerate the Romans. We tend to blame the Jews. That's not biblical. So I want to take the first crucifixion story and analyze it and try to show you how it came into being and what it means and why it's written the way it's written. It was never intended, I will argue, to be read literally. It was intended to interpret the death of Jesus to a synagogue community who was familiar with the Jewish scriptures because it binds the Jewish scriptures around the story of the death of Jesus. It's not an eyewitness account. It's a liturgical interpretation of who it was that died and why it is that his death matters. So I hope you'll return same time same place, same station. Amen.